and we are live. Okay, hello everyone. This is Hackcast number three. Uh, we have Tony with us here. Say hi, Tony. Hey, everyone. Yep, we have Hugo. As usual. As usual for the last two episodes, as usual. And we're going to talk about HackConf. And as you can see, and probably here, we're going to speak in English. So please bear with us, or uh, as we say in Bulgarian, mechkas <laughs> nas. Uh, we will give our best to uh, speak understandable English. But at some point, I think after the 10th minute, we're going to drop into the Eastern European mode. So yeah. enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, this episode is about HackConf. Uh, HackConf is um, coming, so September 15th and 16th of September. Again, this is the conference days, and we're going to have a whole day of workshops. Uh, Friday, this is 14th of September, right? Yeah, and it's happening again in uh, Sofia Tech Park, uh, Jonathan Asuf Lecture Hall. Yeah. Sadly, uh, we want it to be in the, the National Palace of Culture, but... Uh, uh, well, what was the reason again? We're not there. The reason was uh, the European. Oh yeah, the Union. European thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we hosted the, Euro the European Union, so the National Palace of Culture was busy. Perhaps next year, and uh, we want to uh, talk about a little bit about HackConf. Uh, some things from the kitchen, some funny moments, and I have a list on my phone. All right, and I'm going to start with the first question, which is. The first point from the script, which is what is the story of Hackcon? Who wants to want to start? Maybe you should start because you bring the idea for the hell, right? Yeah. Oh, so what's the story of Hackcon? Mm -hmm. uh, this year we're going to. Uh, this will be the fourth edition of Hackcon, and the story is uh, the usual story of how everything in <laughs> our company happens. It's like we are uh, someplace working. It's like a working environment, coding or teaching. And it's like, hmm, we should do a conference. Why not? And one second later, yeah, we should do a conference. Let's totally call it HackConf. Uh, buy the domain, next day uh, make a to-do list of what do you need for a conference. And I guess this was the main idea. Uh, we wanted to do a, a really big tech conference with uh, quality talks where we can bring students or we can bring um, the other students. Uh, we, we have like students fr from the university and students from the, the higher school. education students. Yeah, the high school students and the university students want we wanted to bring them to Sofia because uh, there was like a lot going on outside of Sofia. So we wanted to bring them here and we wanted to make it big, like uh, a big conference. Because why not? <laughs> when you're making a conference, why not make it big? And that was the main idea. That this is this was the story of HackConf. Yeah, it was the, like the first con yeah. hack conf was mainly motivational. And this was motivational. The, the main idea. Now exactly. it's like more tech conference with more technical yeah. specific lectures. Yeah, I think it, it, it came naturally. Uh, it uh, hack conf grown from like the first one was really motivational. We wanted to make people uh, how to say motivated to learn, motivated to yeah. program, motivated to work. And uh, with the second and the third edition, it, it slowly but steady became a development developer conference where we basically talk about everything that's in the software world, in the IT world. Tony, would you like, would you like to add something? <laughs> uh, actually, I think that we were cultivating an online and offline commu online community mostly in Hack Bulgaria yeah. because we organized the uh, many courses and uh, yeah. other tech events and the conference was a great uh, place to gather all these yeah, people yeah, yeah yeah this was yeah this was also one of the ideas that we have uh, we had a great community from the courses we had a great community from the hackathon that yeah we were doing at the faculty of mathematics and informatics and we wanted to bring everything together uh, so yeah, and basically, uh, Tony, uh, she, I think she's the third person in ha in the hack yeah. in our company besides me and you. Uh, me and you, yeah. So uh, Tony joined us to help us organize some events around the courses from Hackball area. Perhaps we should do a history <laughs> hackcast 
uh, somewhere in the future uh, about Hungary Bulgaria and then uh, we saw that Tony is doing really good with organizing events and uh, we continued working with her and naturally she became one of the main drivers for Hapcom. So, let me check my script. <laughs> How are you, uh, you two feeling with the English? It's a bit strange. Kind of okay. okay it's a bit strange. Okay. Yeah, there are like many words that I cannot say in English and they won't have the same meaning as in Bulgarian. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> and, and most of the Bulgarian jokes doesn't really make sense yeah, in yeah. English. So. Yeah. But we're doing this for you, <laughs> non-Bulgarian speakers that are going to come to HackConf and understand everything because this year HackConf is going to be entirely in English for the first time because we want to bring people outside of Bulgaria. Yep. Yep. So we're doing this for you. Second point. What goes into organizing a, a hack conf? All right. Enough of me. <laughs> Carry on. Can I start? A yeah, sure. Uh, so I think that we are a really small team and uh, doing some... Uh... We're a really small team. <laughs> 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 we're seeing the team right now. Yeah, it's really small. Uh, who prepared the conference and I think that planning everything in advance is extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, if, I could, if I could summarize, it's a two-day conference and 11 months in preparation. Yeah. yeah. So what we have... Oh, it's uh, a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a <laughs> lot, yeah. So first of all, after planning, I think that the most important thing is the budget. Yeah, after that is coming budgeting all the costs uh, for the rental of the hall, for the rental of uh, equipment, uh, stage, yeah. streaming. Yeah. There are a lot of things we could uh, think about mm -hmm. in advance. So when we have the budget, we could start uh, calculating which is the pri uh, what to be the price of the tickets yeah. and uh, how many sponsors we could have. Yeah, we need basically actually. to cover the costs, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, most, uh, for me, this is are the most important things in the mm -hmm. uh, strategi strategical part. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, there are more fun, much more fun things like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like recording. Like uh, recording this or... Yeah. Choosing the food. It's really fun. Yeah, you have to taste a lot of things yeah. to, to decide. Yeah, this is one of uh, really funny parts to <laughs> to prepare the merchandise for events, yeah. to select the catering for the event, to to reaching out some tech uh, communities here in Bulgaria and this year for the first time outside in mm -hmm. Bulgaria. It's yeah. really interesting for me. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of things that goes into organizing uh, the event. Yeah. What else I can include? What uh, is the hardest part for you in all this organization? Yeah. I can say all the communication. Okay. I think that we live in a big spreadsheet. Because yeah. all of the things are in uh, one big spreadsheet yeah. and you have to be really organized and mm -hmm. to, to keep up to date uh, all the things. So. The communicating is, I think, is uh, the really hardest thing here. Okay. Personally, yeah. I got a really hard time choosing the, the right lectures because we got a pretty big spreadsheet with all the people that yeah, yeah. wanted to participate in the conference, and we have to, we had to choose for like sixteen. No, um, almost ninety. Almost ninety uh, lectures, which was yeah. really hard for me because almost everything seems pretty interesting, mm -hmm. and almost all of the uh, lectures could, could be really meaningful and, and nice and we just have to choose from from all of yeah. this and it's kind of yeah yeah basically picking speakers is hard as hell yeah because whatever you do there are more um, if you have uh, 20 slots there will be like at least 40 to 50 people that can go into those slots and you have to make a choice yeah and sometimes we we kind of uh, did the wrong choice sometimes we did really good choice but yeah picking speakers is really hard but uh, as Tony said if if you want to make a conference the first thing that you need is a spreadsheet and the second thing that you need is a budget because uh, believe me conference conferences can get pretty expensive really fast it's like yeah. 
let's have this uh, super cool thing during the conference, but it costs a lot. So <laughs> should we do it or should we not do it? Yeah, because uh, we're covering food. It's like uh, we, we covered the lunch for some numbers. We have around uh, thousand yeah. people, yeah. maybe more, like unique people mm -hmm. coming for the three days of the conference workshop, day one, day two, and we have like on the live stream, we do a live stream uh, for more all the conferences. We had, last year we had more than 5,000 people. Five, yeah, more than 5K people us. watching us live uh, on YouTube. Or, I'm not sure about Facebook. Did we stream on Facebook? We yeah. tried, but we tried, but we, yeah. it failed. Yes. Yeah. There, there is a four-hour limit of the streaming of Facebook, yeah, yeah, which yeah. doesn't really. We will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Zero. All right. We will do. Oh, great. Yeah. 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 So we, we cover the food. We cover. Uh, we do um, t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Some merchandise. Merchandise. Goodie bags. Yeah, goodie bags. Uh, some fancy stickers and. Yeah, and like usually the the lecture halls are. You have to, as Tony said, you have to start 11 months uh, before the conference because you have to negotiate a, a good price for the lecture hall, a good price for the catering and a good price for the t-shirts. I think the second hat conf, uh, we were like barely, there was a real chance of not having t-shirts. Uh, this was 2015. The, the first or? The first. Oh yeah, the first. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a week before we, three no days before oh yeah three days yeah. before we had no t-shirts it was funny yeah and what happened then the t-shirts uh, was ready the day before the conference yeah uh, oh yeah i remember that we worked we... with costume again yeah yeah i remember the conversation uh, uh which went something like uh, do you want me to come to the shop to print t-shirts <laughs> so you can make it <laughs> it was yeah it was fun fun times yeah, so what else? Uh, sponsors? Yeah, I want to mention that I'm really, really happy that uh, we work with uh, our sponsors. They are, all, yeah. they are awesome companies because uh, they're really awesome. They're joining us every year and it, the work with them is really, is really good. Yeah, this, this was a sponsored message from our <laughs> sponsors. We love you sponsors for sponsoring our conference. But the truth is, uh, it's like easier to sell a conference to an IT company than it's to sell a course. Uh, we, we, we saw this sure. uh, with Hack Bulgaria and HackConf. And especially in Bulgaria, there are like a lot of IT companies and they have budgets. And if you make a good conference, the first time, the second time, the third time, it gets easy because they start allocating their budgets one year in advance. Mm -hmm. They say, mm -hmm. are you going to make HackConf uh, 2019? Yeah. We're like, yes. Uh, so the prices are going to be kind of the same and they kind of allocate the same budget. So uh, it's a really nice community and it's really nice, uh, how to say, industry here, mm -hmm. which is helpful because then we can make the conference big and make it even even better for the audience mm -hmm. because this is that we started with the idea to have a quality content for the audience and this is what we always wanted to do and still want to do uh, so yeah uh, sponsors is like a lot of communication a lot of emails a lot of meetings but in the end if you're making a good conference most of the companies are most likely going to sponsor because they have a lot of budget for events so yep. make events <laughs> <laughs> sadly they don't have such budgets for courses yeah it's it's a it's a tough it's strange, sell yeah. it's a tough sell we should we should definitely do a hack cast on this uh when you try to sell courses mm -hmm. it's a tough sell but for the conference i think it's it's okay it's easier yeah it's easier uh what else so yeah sponsors so the f tickets let's talk yeah, about tickets uh, yeah. while we are on the money side of things <laughs> <laughs> actually for the tickets uh we we have to typically every year we decide uh, what ticketing platform to use this year we try we decided to try wings which is bulgarian platform yep. and for now we are happy with their platform kudos for good. wings yes yeah. but to be honest it's really hard for me uh when you have to set up the payment gateway oh. uh, it's uh, yeah let's say some good <laughs> words about paypal 
Good words about PayPal in three. One, two, three. No good words about PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard process to say. Yeah, that. And, and, and it still is. Yeah, it's still. Are we? Yeah. We're not done yet. No. No, we are waiting the answer and we hope All that right. we'll get the money from the tickets. Yeah. yeah. So. Fingers crossed we're gonna get our money from the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um. Um. yeah, so uh, the first year it was uh, free. Yeah, the first two yeah. years. First two years yeah, it was free. Yeah, we were like validating and then we decided to add some tickets uh, because when you make a free conference and you suddenly and you have free tickets and you suddenly sell uh, 3k 4k 5k tickets and you in you cannot plan at all who's yeah. going to come uh, are you going to uh, overbook the place and the fire department is going to come and shut down everything <laughs> as it was the case almost yeah. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost the, case the first time uh, so we decided to add a small price tag. Uh, the third year it was like 20 level, yep. which is roughly 10 euro. Uh, yeah. And it sold out pretty quickly. Yep. And this year we decided, since we're going to make it in English, we're going to make everything the same price, but in a different currency. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Ticket, early bird ticket and student ticket this year they are, they are 20 euro and the regular ticket is like 40. 40, 40 yeah, 40 euro. Yeah. I think that this is affordable price yeah. for the two day conference and day of workshops and uh, some opportunity for networking, learning. Yeah, yeah. For the quality that we provide, 40 euros or 20 euros, it's like nothing compared to the yeah. European conferences that the price tag is. Uh, from 100 and above, yeah. there's nothing like below 100. Uh, so it's pretty affordable. And yeah, we did the same thing with the sponsorship packages. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun moment, yeah. It's the same price, but in Euro. So it didn't go as planned, but after all, it was a good move. So since we're in this European market, we should sell in, in this currency. Yeah. So yeah, uh, and you started talking about speakers. We have, what's, what's the process there? How do we pick our speakers? We just open a form and send it to a lot of people to fill their information there and basically propose their topics. Yep. And after that, we end up with a pretty big spreadsheet of all the proposals. Yep. And we just have to choose like 10% of them because yeah. So this year it was extremely hard because we got like uh, 90, almost 90, yeah, almost Eight, 90 eight, proposals for 19 slots. Yeah, it's really hard because so yeah, there are like topics that you can say this is not going to fit our conference because we want to cover a broad, uh, broad range of topics. Software development, QA, team management, leadership, uh, DevOps, the entire, we try to cover the entire software process because this is a software conference. So it's, it's really hard when you have like for a specific topic, for example, for QA, you have 10 really good proposals mm -hmm. and you have to pick at most two. Yeah. Or three, because otherwise it's going to turn into a QA conference or it's going to turn into a JavaScript conference. So for me, this was like the one of the hardest things organizing conference because you have to say yes to a, to 20 people mm -hmm. and no to 70 people. Yeah. And people usually get mad <laughs> when you say no and you have to give them feedback. And when you give them feedback, they get even madder. <laughs> Which is pretty understandable uh, because when you're on the other side of things and you send a talk, proposed talk to a conference and they say no, it's like, give me some explanation. No explanation. And they give you the explanation which is, you just didn't make the cut. It's not nothing wrong with the talk, nothing wrong with you, you just didn't make the cut. You, you, it's your own lucky day, sorry. So, yeah. Pretty it's much tough because you have to choose and some lectures may, may be very interesting to you personally. For example, yeah, yeah, we yeah, had like yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 lectures that was really interesting to me, but we decided that we're not going to put them in the conference because the audience is not the right audience for these talks. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And we try to, to make interviews with 
the speakers because sometimes there is a really good proposal but uh, the speaker is not very confident yet yeah and there there's um, it's going to take some time to get to the level that we want and perhaps next year we're going to go with the video submissions yeah going to be if great. you want to propose a talk you have to record a video because it gives us the best impression and skills speaking skills articulation and so on uh, which is a decision that we make for our conference and it's for sure not the best one there are like a lot of other processes that you can go through by selecting speakers oh yeah and we're going to use paper call no more google spreadsheets <laughs> like, sure, yeah. spreadsheet for managing uh, top uh, speakers it's, it's a nightmare really nightmare yeah, yeah. all right i think that we kept in mind while uh talking with the uh, people is have they uh done this talk in another conference because mm -hmm. i personally get a little mad when i go to a conference and all the lectures that uh, i hear i have heard them before on other conferences yeah mm -hmm. so the, the the talks on hub on, on hub conf should be pretty unique most of them most of them or at least give some different point of view yes. on the same lecture yeah. but again uh this is pretty interesting because as as a conference organizers who want to have like in unique Mm -hmm. uh lectures that are happening for the first time so the audience is going to be interested and they because what people uh usually do is they google everyone going to the conference and if they see the same lecture they watch then they are not yeah. interested yeah. You know, after this but as a speaker uh it's like really hard to constantly create new talks <laughs> for every conference that you want to attend so yeah. it's it's an interesting dynamic and it's interesting game game to play uh so yeah i guess i understand both sides mm -hmm. it's not speaker's fault if they want to reuse the same talk because they invested time and perhaps they're going to give a good talk but for us if there's a recording there's like people are going to watch it and yeah. not be interested in it yeah. or if the speaker have made this lecture once or twice it's kind of okay but yep. if it is a lecture for the last 10 years yeah then maybe everyone have heard it yeah all right, so we covered number three. We have two more to go. I'm not sure how we are with the time, and I really hope I've hit the start recording button over there. I Wait. call this too, yeah. Uh, I won't move the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. It says stop recording. Cool. So far, so good. How, how do you feel? Pretty good. It's not, not that scary to speak in English. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a bit rough yeah. with the uh words and phrases but sacrifice that we make for you <laughs> non-bulgarian speakers all right number four how do we market and sell tickets we didn't cover this as i said we are using wims which is our, our website so tickets, this is a ticketing platform. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 it's a ticketing platform. But beside this, uh, we are using our channels, HackConf. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, we are using our channels, also Hack Bulgaria channels. Yeah. The company beside, uh, behind the HackConf conference. We are, <coughs> we are working with a lot of the tech communities here in yeah. Bulgaria. I'm happy that we have them on board and with other tech communities outside Bulgaria we are uh, market uh, we are promoting us yeah, on yeah, the yeah, social yeah, channels yeah. with paid uh, promotion yeah, yeah so we do a lot of uh, advertisement on Facebook Twitter and Instagram Instagram is a big thing yeah yep and so for me selling tickets is really hard uh, because you you have like those channels you have facebook twitter and instagram and you have advertisement but in bulgaria there are like a lot of conferences that are happening around september around yeah. october and if you open your facebook you're going to be you're going to see a lot of ads for a lot of conferences and you have to think like uh, you need to do more it's not ads won't cut it ads won't sell uh, a thousand tickets mm -hmm. our our target is a thousand tickets 
So you have to basically do whatever it takes in order to sell your tickets. It's like we do a lot of promotion. Uh, if, if you see our uh, uh, marketing tab in Weems with the promo codes, it's three scroll, scrolls long. Yeah. We, we constantly do uh, promotions in specific groups. For example, if we're going to have two talks about JavaScript on HackConf, we're going to make a specific promotion to the Bulgarian JavaScript groups in Facebook because then people will, will be interested in the conference because there, there are going to be some talks related to them, to, for example, to JavaScript. Uh, we have to do a lot of, con how to say, different content. We do mm -hmm. video teasers with, with the speakers. speakers yeah. yeah, and th those teasers are getting really better. So this year we have really good video teasers. You should watch them. Uh, Alex, who was helping us with the last episode, uh, is filming them okay. and he's doing a great job, uh, I guess, with the ideas and also the execution. And there's also, for example, we introduced this strategy in Hacksoft this company, which is the mother of all of the companies, Hack Bulgaria, Hack Conf, and so on. Uh, every uh, employee of Hacksoft can bring five friends, for yeah. example. And if this is working, and so far it's working really well, we're going to make them even more. And for me, this is really hard because if you want to sell a thousand tickets, you have to constantly promote, advertise, grind, message friends <laughs> and ask them are they, are they coming to HackConf, uh, make a lot of promotions, make videos like this, yep. also giving some insight on how, how we organize everything and it's, it's an interesting um, uh, approach because there is a correlation between how much effort you put and the ticket sales. Yeah. It's, we started, uh, how to say, putting a lot more effort uh, in the last month and the ticket sales went straight up. Anything uh, to typically, the ticket sales uh, go well in the last two or three weeks. Yeah. That's what I learned in the past uh, and years. And in the first two or three weeks, because there are plenty of people that have already been to previous hack yeah. yeah. They know that the quality is good, they know that the conference is good, then they wait to basically announce the next conference in order to get tickets. Yeah. So the, the first weeks and the last weeks are, yeah. are the weeks. Yeah, and, and I, I, the thing that uh, perhaps uh, it, it's really interesting because when we had this 20 level 10 euro tickets, mm -hmm. they sold out, just it's all out. It, people yep. were selling HackConf tickets uh, in Facebook groups <laughs> for <laughs> way more than uh, the original cost. But once we went to Euro, there is like a psychological barrier mm -hmm. to for, for this amount of money to spend 40 level, 20 euro for, for a conference here in, in Sofia. And I'll be really happy if we hit the thousand the thousand ticket mark. We're I think we're almost there. there. Almost there, right? Almost there, but still, uh, there's some time to go. There's like September. I, I think everything will go crazy. But if you're organizing a conference and you're expecting that people will buy tickets just like that, it just won't happen. Yeah, you have to put in the work. Yep. Something else. Yeah, let's see. Final point, number five. Funny stories from previous hackcoms. <sighs> you remember when on, <laughs> on, on the last on the last hack comp, Yeah. Uh, like uh, four hours before the conference, we realized that the screens are too small oh. <laughs> and no yeah, one was yeah. actually going to see anything <laughs> of, of the presentations. Yeah. So we managed to order bigger, bigger screens and uh, huge thanks to the uh, tech people at the um, facility that managed yeah. to get bigger screens from, from, from somewhere, somewhere yeah. in like four hours, which was great. Yeah, it was like, I think it was the Friday before yeah, the conference yeah. yes. and one, was of the speakers, one of the speakers was, uh, he was like, those screens are pretty small, I, <laughs> I cannot see a thing from here and we're like, no, no, they're fine. Wait a minute, on the side, small, yeah. can, can, you, can you fire it so we can, so we can test? And like they're really small and no one will see nothing. And yeah, as you said, the people from uh, Sofia Tech Park uh, managed to get some big, big yeah. screens from somewhere yeah. and we actually saved the conference. 
and it was yeah. going to be a pretty big fail basically because the screens where the slides go were really small and the only first 10 rolls were going to see something at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other fun stories. Hmm. How about people going to lunch 10 times in a row? <laughs> When we have the subway one. The subway <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, the subway okay, one. first year when the conference <laughs> was free, the one was subway sandwiches. Yeah. And we had uh, 1,600 attendees and everyone was like crazy. I want to... Where is the subway? Where is yeah, the subway? Yeah, where is the subway? I want subway. And everyone uh, goes back uh, for a sandwich. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we were giving uh, yeah, we decided coupons. to print coupons, yes, and to give uh, with with the ticket we actually gave coupons. Yeah. So that ensures that on that every person got only one sandwich. Yeah. But but some of the attendees decided <laughs> that these coupons that we actually print with our printer here in the office <laughs> are real coupons for the real subway that is down the street near to the to hack off. Yeah. And they go to the subway <laughs> and it was like, Hey, give us a sandwich, here is the coupon and, and the people from the from the subway were like <laughs> what is this couple? We never see this. <laughs> there were attendees going to Subway or around Sofia City Center <laughs> yeah. with the couples <laughs> in Subway shops and demanding a sandwich for hot golf. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> that was fun, yeah. Yeah, that was really fun. So people went crazy for Subway, which I really don't get. Everyone like, like it. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy for Subway. Yeah, in the, uh, this was the first year in the National Palace of Culture. Uh, there are some interesting things happening in the minus, minus three uh, level of the National Palace of Culture, the basement. Uh, are you talking about the cats yeah. or the mouse? Both. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the National Palace of Culture is this big um, building. building yeah. Yeah. It's a castle, yeah. basically, in central Sofia. And when you're organizing an event, there's a special elevator that goes uh, to behind the lecture hall and you have to go in a basement, which yeah. is, which looks like just from uh, taken out from a movie where a drug deal is going to happen. <laughs> it's literally the same basement and there are like a lot of big cats walking on the pipes because they are hot and they're like a lot of big Mice is the plural form of yeah. mice. Mice. Yeah. Mices. Yeah. All right. It was really interesting because you, if you're not careful enough, you can get lost in the basement, and there's like almost no light and no signs for where you should go. Yeah. Yeah. It is really freaky. Yeah. Yeah. What else? <sighs> Funny stories. We told the super one. Oh, there. <laughs> How about <laughs> the bus with the water? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I had to drive a bus. I have never drove a bus before. And it's like a 15 years old bus that uh, was barely moving. And we decided to fill it with uh, almost two tons of water, yep. uh, with water bottles. And I had to, to, to drive this bus from, from somewhere around Sofia to the center of Sofia. Yep. It was kind of dangerous because I have really no idea what was I doing while driving this. Yeah. It's, it's pretty strange, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> but I managed to actually drove it to the castle. There, there was some overheating problem. Yeah, that, it, <laughs> it was overheating all the time. And uh, the, 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 the solution for this is, was basically to turn the heat up in the... Uh, during, yeah. yeah, during driving, you just have to turn the heater up. And it was summer, so yeah. it was really hot. and. Inside was even even hotter, you know. It was pretty fun experience. <laughs> Your own personal soul. Yeah, yeah. I think I risked my life four or five times for for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. I think that from first year we've learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, the first year was like we had no idea what's happening. Mm -hmm. But somehow we managed to. Yeah, somehow it was nice. Yeah. Somehow it was nice. So. I think that's about it. Yep. We're not even sure if it's 20, 30 or 40 minutes. We're not even sure if you're recording. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that we're recording. Yeah. Uh, HackConf, 15th and 16th of September. Yep. 
uh, there's st still tickets on sale everything's going to be in English uh, all the speakers are announced on hackon.bg uh, which is the website we're going to announce the workshops soon we're going to announce the schedule soon uh, and it's going to be a really nice conference uh, speakers are great the topics are great uh, everything is going to be prepared everything is going to be rehearsed so you should come and yeah. also, you're still going to listen to us speaking in English, which is trying funny. to make jokes which <laughs> are not funny at all, which <laughs> may be funny as a side yeah. yeah. All right, so I will click say bye. bye. This was bye. podcast number three in English. Yeah. The first one in English. We'll see, perhaps uh, in the long run, everything's going to be in English, but for now, we're, we're going to decide episode by episode yeah. about the language. And I'm going to use the mouse to click stop recording.